Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. What I want to talk to you about today is something that's been on my heart uh, for myself personally for a few months, and I've started praying this on a regular basis, and that is the gift of awareness. Now, that's not an official gift listed in the Bible, but I believe that we spend so much time being unaware of things that we should be aware of and probably are very aware of things that we don't even need to pay that much attention to. And I believe that there is a real demonic push from the kingdom of darkness to keep people from being focused. And do you know, even though you're sitting here today, if your mind leaves this meeting to go to the store, to think about what you're going to eat later or all the things you need to do later, for all intent and purposes, you're not here. And so it's a challenge in the world that we live in today because there's so much coming at us. I mean, it's just phones ringing and dings for email and dings for text messages. And it's just, you, I mean, even riding down the road, there's so many messages on the side of the road and just so much stuff coming at us that it's getting more and more challenging to keep our minds on anything for any length of time. And I know even just like in my workout routine that I do with my trainer, he tells me all the time, focus on the muscle that you're working. He calls it, put, the, put your mind in the muscle. And of course, I have a hard time doing that. I'll be lifting weights and be in India, or I'll be, you know, <laughs> lifting weights last week and here in Winston-Salem, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And... Uh, I've asked him to talk to me some about why that's so important. And he said, because when you, when you put your mind in it, the muscle actually behaves better and you get more value out of it. And so I think that we need to really begin to pray and ask God to give us what I'm just going to call the gift of awareness. There's so many things, even going on around us all the time, that we need to be aware of. And we're missing things. We're missing things that God's doing We're missing things that God wants us to do. We're missing a lot of uh, uh, beautiful people out there because we just don't focus on what we should be focusing on. Is anybody in agreement with me today that we need to have a greater gift of awareness? And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about it in several different areas. But first, I would like to talk about uh, being more aware And this is something that's really important to me, being more aware of what God is doing in our lives. And I believe that God is doing things all the time that we just miss and don't even see. Sometimes we think we're lucky. <laughs> Sometimes we think it's just coincidence. Sometimes we don't think at all. But I believe that one of the things that brings us into a closer, more intimate relationship with God is if we pay attention to what He's doing in our lives And we make a, a bigger deal out of it than what we do. So let's start in 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 16. And I'm going to share some things that happened to me many, many years ago as a result of this scripture. Now, these scriptures are about learning to be conscious of God's love. You see, nothing does you much good if you're unconscious of it. That's why the Bible teaches us a lot about meditating on things. And that just means to roll your mind over and over on things. How awesome is it if you wake up in the morning and you lay in bed for just a few minutes and you, you're conscious that God is watching you, that you're not alone, that he's right there with you, that he loves you, and that he, he can never love you any more than he does at this moment right here. But if you don't think about that, if you don't roll that over and over in your mind, then for all intent and purposes, it's like it's not even reality for you. And these are some of the habits that we need to develop as believers in Jesus Christ if we really want the Word of God to benefit us like it's supposed to. Meditate on the Word. Think about the promises of God 
and think about how blessed you are and what God has done by saving you and the mercy that he shows to you every day. And the more you ponder these things, and I'm not saying you have to go around all day long just, you know, trying to be some spiritual group guru and just sitting around, you know, meditating on the Word, you know. But we need to, we need to be more aware of what we have in Christ Jesus. Well, you know, as a young woman starting out in ministry 30 some odd years ago, this was after I had taught home Bible studies for five years. I was now working at a church in St. Louis. So this was probably like about 31 or 32 years ago. Um, it was important for me, although I didn't know it, that I get a really good foundation in my life about how much God loved me. And, uh, you know, we can tell everybody God loves you, but do we really know how much God loves us? I mean, like, really? The Bible says that if you know the perfect love of God, that it casts out all fear. You don't have any fear. Because when you know that God really, really loves you, you know that no matter what happens, that somewhere in the midst of it, God is going to work something good out of it, and that even though none of it makes any sense, that there is a plan in it somehow that's going to ultimately work out for your good. And so even in the midst of hurting, you can be comforted even in your pain, knowing that God will take even that pain and do something wonderful and beautiful in you through that. And so the very first message that I taught publicly when I started teaching at the church where I started the, the women's Bible study that has ultimately grown and developed into what we see today. When I prayed and asked God what he wanted me to teach, he said, I want you to tell them that I love them. And I thought, well, I, you know, God, I want a message of power. <laughs> I remember saying that, I want a message of power. And uh, I said, everybody knows you love them. Everybody knows you love them. And the answer that came back in my heart was, no, they don't. If they did, they'd act a lot different than what they do. Now, I want you to track with me today and think about what I'm saying. And so, eventually, over the next little bit of time, God led me to this 1 John 4, 16, and I'm going to read 17 and 18, and it just really, you know, we all talk about, like, key moments in our life with God and specific things that have happened to us that have been real uh, life-changing things. And this was actually one of them for me. This 1 John 4, 16 just really taught me a lesson that has been very valuable in my life. And we know, we understand, we recognize, and we are conscious of, not unconscious, <laughs> we are conscious of by observation, I'm taking it slow because I want you to get these words, by observation and by experience, and we believe, adhere to, put faith in, and rely on the love that God cherishes for us. God is love, and he who dwells and continues in love dwells and continues in God, and God dwells and continues in him. So we're going to read 17 and 18 in a minute, but I want to elaborate on this for just a few moments because what God showed me out of this is that, I, that, that he was loving me all the time that I just was not conscious and aware of it, and that he was doing all kinds of things for me all the time that was showing his love for me. A lot of them are in little ways. But how many of you know that sometimes it's the little things that people do for you that can ultimately end up meaning the most? It is exciting to be a Christian. You never know what God is going to do and what he's going to do next. Any given day, you never know what God is going to do. You never know where he's going to show up. That's why we need to be expecting, we need to be looking, we need to be focused, we need to be aware, and we need to stop thinking that all these things that happen, let me tell you something, if 500 people have applied for a job and you get it, that's not an accident. And that's not because you're so brilliant either. It's because God gave you favor. Amen? Let me tell you something that God put on my heart this morning. God wants to take so much better care of you than what you're letting him do. <laughs> he wants you to deposit yourself with him 
just like you drive through at a bank and put your paycheck down that slot, what kind of confidence and trust does that take? <laughs> and you get a little deposit slip back saying the money's in there and safe, and then you just go on about your business, and when you need something, you write a check or you use your debit card. Well, let me tell you something. The Bible says that we should deposit ourselves with God. And if you will deposit yourself with him every day and say, this is not about what I can do, it's about what you have done. I love you. I want to, I want to catch you showing out in my life. Amen? Amen? And just and, and be like a little child, unless we come like a little child. Become like a little child, and I'm challenging you today to make a bigger deal out of the little things that God does for you and also to get more excited about them. And I can tell you, living like this is probably one of the most exciting parts of my personal relationship with God. It just keeps me fired up and stirred up just to see the things that God does for us. Um, actually, my mom died last week. And uh, I'm good with it. She was 90. She had had a very difficult life. She was born again and... She's so much better off today than what she ever was when she was alive here. And uh, somebody might think, well, what are you doing out preaching just a few days after your mom died? Well, I think that's the happiest thing to do, don't you? Yeah. Amen. And, um, but it, I noticed, everybody say noticed. Yes. See, I'm going to share some scriptures with you in a minute. Jesus noticed everything. I mean, no matter where he was going, he noticed people around him that were hurting and needy. And not only did Jesus notice, he stopped. There's a very well-known book that's been around for a long time called In His Steps, studying the steps of Jesus. But I think we need to study the stops of Jesus. I think that, that we need to see how just a simple little need that we have will stop Jesus in his tracks. You know, an intimate personal relationship with God is what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not talking to you today about dead, dry, rote religion where you just march into a building every week, sit there, you know, get up, get down, you know, get up, get down, get bored, fall asleep, can't wait for it to be ever, go home and then go back and do the same thing the next week. I'm talking about living with God, abiding in Him, letting His Word abide in you. I mean, get full on, full in. It's all about God. In Him, we live and move and have our being, and apart from Him, we can do absolutely nothing. I'd like to come out there and just unzip all of you and shove this in you and... <laughs> We need to be excited about serving God. Amen? And so I noticed just some things that God did for me. First of all, I was home the two days she was in the hospital before she went to heaven, which I'm not home that much. And so I felt like God arranged that. I think it was pretty nice of God to arrange for her to die on a day when I could be there. Now, that may sound goofy to you, but because I could have been on the other side of the world, and I think it was more important for her that I was there than anybody. So first of all, I was there. The other thing that I saw that God did, which just was so sweet, I'll always remember this, the week before she passed, she had the best week that I had seen her have in years. And I had given her my devotional trust in God day by day, and she'd been having lots of serious problems with her eyes, and we'd gotten her some new glasses, and they'd done a little laser thing. And so, and it was really interesting because we went through all that, and she only had those glasses about 10 days. And it was a lot of work and effort and a lot of money, but God wanted her to have that thing that she wanted so much, which was to be able to see and read. And she was like a little kid. She would call me up, not every day, but she'd call me three or four times in that week. Well, honey, I just want you to know that I'm sitting up in my chair and I'm reading my Trust in God day-by-day -day devotional. 
and this is, and she said, and this is what you told me to do today. And I just want you to know that I'm going to do what you tell me to do. <laughs> and she was so happy about being able to see. And then also, the last time that I visited my mother, we had the best visit that we had had in possibly 10 years. Because my mother had some mental issues and visiting was not always as pleasant as you might have liked it to have been. And we just had a great, a great time. I mean, I, I always went because I knew it was what God wanted me to do, but a lot of times it wasn't all that pleasant. It depended on what anxiety level she was at that day and how much dementia was showing up. And that, she was just like, it was just perfect that day. And I believe that God did that for me. Now, see, I could just write all that off and say, well, wasn't that a coincidence? Well, wasn't that lucky? Can I just tell you something? Just throw the word luck away. Just. That word annoys me. I don't like to hear Christians use the word luck. Now, I'm not saying it's a sin, but let me tell you something. If you're in a full-on relationship with God, there's nothing lucky about anything good that happens to you. It is on purpose a blessing from God. Amen? So way back 32 years ago, I began to learn to live like this. And it did so much for my personal walk with God. And I personally think it is really increases the anointing on my life and helps me be able to share Jesus with you in a way that is very real and personal instead of just like, you know, he's some God off up in the sky somewhere that we've got to be afraid of half the time. Verse 17, in this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we might have confidence for the day of judgment. If you need more confidence, soak up more of God's love with assurance and boldness to face him because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, complete, perfect love, which is the kind of love that God has for you. I'm not talking to somebody else today. I'm talking to you. And to you that are watching by TV, I know you're out there. And God loves you. And he's doing things for you all the time. And it's time we wake up and begin to see how good God is and how much he loves us and get excited about it. For fear brings with it the thought of torment and punishment. So he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, has not yet grown into love's complete perfection. So this is the first thing that I think that we need to be more aware of is just really how much God loves us. And I would challenge you to keep what you can call a book of God's favor or a book of remembrance. Guys can do it as well as ladies. I know you may not want to sit around and journal all the time, but you know, just a little book to write down some of these little things that you catch God doing for you. And I'm telling you, you get about three, four, five years of that under your belt and you have a rough, rotten day where you feel depressed. You can get a cup of coffee or tea or water or whatever you drink. You can get that book out and you can remember Come on, there's power in remembering. You can remember some of the outrageous things that God has done for you, and immediately you'll start to feel closer to God. We're loved. <laughs> God loves us. Doesn't matter who doesn't love us. <laughs> if God be for me, who can be against me? If God is on my side, whom shall I fear? Now, I think that we should be more aware of what God is doing for us than what he's not doing for us. I think we're pretty good at being aware of that. 
I'm telling you what, God's involved in every little detail of our lives. Develop the gift of awareness. I'm praying all the time, God, grant me the gift of awareness. Will you begin to pray that over your life? God, grant me the gift of awareness. I want to be more and more aware of the things that I should be aware of. Matthew 7 says, Why are you aware of the speck that's in your brother's eye <laughs> and unaware of the log that's in your own? Well, we could camp right here for the rest of the day, couldn't we? I don't know about you, but I am, I am trained, highly skilled and trained in fault finding. <laughs> you say, well, what kind of a person are you? An honest one. I notice things that I shouldn't be noticing. It's part of my personality. I just see things. I, I notice things. And it's, you know, I thank God because of his word, I've learned to handle those things differently. And so maybe I would notice what was wrong without making any effort at all. But now I've learned that I can make a little effort and I can notice what's right, and then that medicine of God's Word is the antidote that I needed for the poison that was filling my soul of being a fault finder. God has got an antidote for everything that tries to poison our soul. If you got snake bite, the first thing you'd do would be go to a hospital and get an antidote. At least if you were smart and wanted to keep living, you would. And we have a whole list of antidotes right here for everything that ever tries to poison our soul. I mean, you can find it right in the concordance. You're angry? Seven scripture references. Look them up. Soak them in. Wow. Man's anger does not promote the righteousness that God desires. Mm. A man who can't control his anger is like a city broken down without walls. Wow. And see, the more you do this, the more you won't even have to go look at them. Your, your spirit's going to be full of them. And it, it's almost like, I, I feel like sometimes like I'm a, a, a spiritual jukebox. It's like you just punch any button and just get a whole bunch of stuff out of me. But when you have enough word in you, no matter what kind of a situation you get in, the devil may push one button, but the Holy Ghost can push another button, and out's going to come the antidote for what you need. Well, I wish I knew the word like that. Stop it. You don't need wishbone. We need backbone. <laughs> Nobody gets a great life wishing for it. You know, many places in the Bible we're told to remember what God has done for us. So we need to pray, I believe, that God would grant us the gift of awareness. I pray for that fairly regularly. And what the reason why I do that is because I want to be aware of what God's doing for me, and I want to be aware of what I can be doing for other people. Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayer Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, 
they have been suffering from those uh, diseases or uh, infections from quite a lo- quite a long, but uh, they never go to uh, medical help because they don't have a uh, uh, finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel and. You know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India. And because of your help, your, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek. Van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, That's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or or quarterly. But we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. Well, you certainly don't have to look very hard these days to find things to worry about. If you turn on the news for even five minutes, you can feel like the world is just spinning out of control. That's why I'm so excited about my new devotional, Trusting God Day by Day. These devotions will help you change your focus from your circumstances to the truth that's in God's Word. You know, it's time for us to enter into the peace that God has made available to us where we can enjoy our lives. And that comes only from trusting God day by day. Begin je dag met God met de 365 overdenkingen voor het hele jaar. Bestel het boek God Vertrouwen van dag tot dag nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.